Being a cat call, it's less aggressive, but also more. Uh, I'll give you an example. Recently, I was walking home after a show, and I was like wearing a short skirt, and I was kind of drunk, uh, which isn't that unusual for me, because I drink enough that my blood type is basically AA. <laughs> <laughs> Um, anyway, I was walking home alone in a short skirt at night, already in a vulnerable position. And this car starts to slow down next to me, and they start yelling at me from their car, and they're like, hey, sweetie, hey, girl, hey. And I'm like, fuck this, gonna keep going. Not worth my time. And they keep yelling at me, and now they're honking at me, and they're like, hey, sweetie, hey, girl, hey. At this point, like, I'm fed up. So I just go, what? And they go, there's a bear behind you. <laughs> and there was. <laughs> you can't call it all I'm saying. So it was a bear call. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we got a comedian over here. <laughs> yeah, it was a bear call. Uh, <laughs> so, um, when I'm not doing comedy, I'm a caregiver for people with mental illness, like everything from dementia to schizophrenia, and it's great. I mean, the dating advice I get from my clients is me, for sure. <laughs> One of my clients, he told me the way to a man's heart is to sing the national anthem. <laughs> Um, that was not as much a joke, just if you hear patriotic music later, I'm just trying to get laid, like, don't ever think of it. <laughs> <laughs> um, my other client, Milo, he's so sweet, he asked me to be his girlfriend. And because I'm a heartless bitch, I turned him down. <laughs> uh, his response to my rejection, though, was like the most romantic thing I've ever heard. Because I said, Milo, I can't be your girlfriend. And he said, if you don't find anybody better, I got a can of ravioli in my cabinet. You can have the whole thing. <laughs> <laughs> this guy is good. <laughs> he knows how to pick up a chubby girl. <laughs> Cause I, I, like I'm not saying I'm desperate, but at some point I was paying $10 a month to be the first Tinder profile people in my area see. So it's not right. <laughs> Is this more of an OK Cupid crowd or? <laughs> POF, you have plenty of freaks. <laughs> oh man. Uh, also, about five minutes into my set at this point, so I am contractually obligated to let you know that I did CrossFit once. Just so you know. <laughs> I'm kidding, I'm not contractually obligated. I just like the delusional superiority that comes along with it. <laughs> Oh man. Yeah, I like Tinder a lot. Um, I'm actually not on it anymore. Mostly because I got this one message that I knew nobody would ever be able to top. Uh, this guy messaged me. I'm going to try to say it without blushing because it was really sweet. His first message to me was, What's up, slut? <laughs> What's up, slut? We're <laughs> married. <laughs> <laughs> I, uh, I think there should be an alternative to Tinder, though, because I just feel like my strength is in my personality. Um, <laughs> I just think it should match you on something deeper than physical appearance. Oh, the people laughing the hardest at that were my parents, because I know it's true. <laughs> um, no, I think there should be an alternative to Tinder. I thought of this while I was on Grab one time. And <laughs> I think that there needs to be a way to match you based on the deepest version of yourself. And the way to get to know the deepest version of yourself is to look at your recent Google searches. Because <laughs> that shit is revealing. <laughs> so I was like, okay, there should be a dating website that matches you based on recent Google searches, right? Then I looked at my own recent Google searches, <laughs> which at the time, were animal gestation periods, uh, what is raindrop drop top, <laughs> and Michael Buble eating corn. <laughs> so I'm sick of the tender. <laughs> no, I'm actually, I'm not on Tinder right now because I'm kind of in a relationship, which is pretty exciting. I appreciate the support, guys. <laughs> Yay! Thanks, girl. There we go. <laughs> No, I am, but uh, it's actually an open relationship. 
Has anybody here ever been in an open relationship? Sorry, has anyone been in an open relationship intentionally? <laughs> I've been in several. This is just the first one where I was a part of that decision. <laughs> Oh, that made you a lot sadder than I meant to <laughs> Oh, man. I, uh, I'm dreading this relationship ending, because I, and I know it's going to, you know. Not, like, things are going great. I just took a BuzzFeed quiz recently. Uh, it said your taco preference will reveal if your relationship is doomed. And, uh, I guess carne asada was the wrong choice, because we had two weeks left. Um, but, um, yeah, I'm dreading it ending because I think that it's going to be a bigger hit to my self-esteem than when a monogamous relationship ends. Because in an open relationship, you can sleep with anyone, you know? And when you end an open relationship, you're saying, I want to sleep with anyone but you. <laughs> I'm not looking forward to that. I also haven't had that good luck lately. Like, the last time I got hit on... It was a lot more intense than I had hoped. Um, what was happening was I was walking to work and I got hit by a truck. <laughs> and that's not a joke, that really happened. <laughs> uh, yeah, that was in February. It was actually funny because it was a band I'd gone to see the night before and somebody should tell them, like, there's a lot easier ways to hit on a girl than going 25 miles an hour at a fast walk, you know? <laughs> like, come on, guys. <laughs> No, it, it was weird. I was I was walking, and there's a stop sign, and I see them coming. So I just look at them and give them that smile that every white person is like genetically predisposed to do. You know, like <laughs> <laughs> I'm just gonna show teeth at all. I'm sorry, that's a generalization. I don't know if that's like all white people. It might just be the ones who like wear Crocs and think Paul Art Walcott is like a cinematic triumph. You know. <laughs> <laughs> So Pueblo, basically. <laughs> um, no, but I gave them that smile, so I think that they hit me on purpose after seeing that. But, uh, <laughs> but it was crazy. They hit me, like, I go flying in one direction, my shoes go in another, they're on the other side of the road. And I look up, and like these five band members are just piling out of the van, or out of the van, and they're like, do you need an ambulance? And I'm so in shock, and I'm like, did you guys play last night? <laughs> I am so weird when I'm in shock, too. I was so, I like, the way I deal with being in shock is to just overcompensate on how peppy I am. <laughs> it's really weird. Like, they were like, we thought we had a dog. And I was like, are you calling me a bitch? <laughs> like, dumb shit like that. So, uh, yeah, I'm super weird when I'm in shock. Don't hit me with a truck, please. <laughs> um... Are you guys excited for Christmas? Yay! Yeah! Or holidays. Or yeah, holidays. Uh, okay. Equanimous. Uh, <laughs> right. I, uh, I love the holidays, but I have a little bit of a problem with some of the music. I think that the New Year's song, you know, like, da -ba -da 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 -ba -da -da, I don't think it's a good representation of what New Year's is like. So I rewrote it to be about the day after New Year's. I am all too familiar with. So this is my version of the New Year's song. I check my bank account to see how much money I had spent. Do any of y'all have a couch? I won't be making rent. <laughs> I kiss the stranger. We're all friends. I'll be honest, I kissed more than one. Had random sex that was not good. No condom wrapper on the floor next stop. Planned Parenthood. <laughs> <laughs> All right, that was about 50 50. I'll take it. <laughs> I've been thinking a lot about Rudolph, too. I know that as a kid, I always did those callbacks after, where it was like, you would even say it closed. Like the light bulb! Yeah. <laughs> like, why did we need so much context? <laughs> like, we really had to understand that. I also think that by changing those callbacks, you could completely change the tone of the song, you know? Like, he'll go down in his story, like O.J. Simpson! <laughs> 
I, uh, but I still perform gender roles to a good bit. Like, I uh, still cross my legs when I pee in public. Like, just in case anybody walks in, they know I'm a lady. <laughs> I, um, I also still have that princess fantasy a little bit. You know, but now I'm more realistic about it. Like, I know I'm never going to be Cinderella, because if anything, like, I'm the one turning into a pumpkin, like, halfway there. <laughs> And I've already, already brought way too much dishonor onto my family to ever bounce back, so Mulan is also not an option. <laughs> They're like, true that girl. <laughs> I, uh, I did get to live out my princess fantasy this past Halloween. I was Snow White. I was Snow White Trash. Snow White Trash. I uh, I would say, though, the princess I have the most in common with is probably Ariel. Uh, not because I want to be a mermaid or anything. I just, we're both borderline hoarders. <laughs> and uh, out of necessity, I sometimes crack my hair with a fork. Thanks. My family is here tonight. So I'm very excited for that. They're great. My mom is great. I really 